Last video I showed you guys my first miniature model which was called House Zero. This time I will be showing you an upgrade. Well maybe not the size upgrade but this one was so much easier to make. And it also looks more interesting. Look at that front door. This is my first model I called House Zero and then this one is called House 1. While I was making House 0, I thought it was really huge in terms of floor space for a house. I thought about making another one that is smaller and cozier. The benefit to having it smaller is that there's a lot less uh, empty space, like the side of House 0 here, or what you'd call negative space, where there's nothing going on. No, both of these are in the same scale. It's H0 or HO. It is the most popular miniature scale in ro railroad miniatures 187th scale I, I picked this scale because I needed some kind of standard to make all my future models consistent it is also because it's practical if I share this model to the public at least it can be used on train dioramas made by other people or it just fits in with the industry standard now the shape is an upgrade I made it into an L shape to make it look different from the first one. I also gave it a basement. Here you can see the windows. Basement also means that the front door will be elevated so it will need to have some stairs. I did the math to make the stairs believable in its scale and these are the precise measurements of every step. I added some railings so there's no insurance liability. This will make the front area look a little busy, meaning not that much negative space that I was talking about. All the windows have the same shape and size, both this one and house zero. I did it like that so there's some standardization, except for this one. This one's a big one, just to break up the pattern, otherwise they all look the same. The roof is the same, it still has that texture that makes it look ceramic. I made the roof on this protrusion here a bit flat. So we have a big roof and a small roof, and these two will be printed separately. Mm, yes, it's going. It's going. It's going. And you guys might have noticed that I don't have that cool looking hexagons on the foundation anymore. That's because I thought it was impractical. The hexagons are really meant for structural integrity of the corners to help it stay rigid and having these hexagons on the foundation is a little excessive and I'm not going to be throwing this at a wall because a dormer won't fit. So it is unnecessary to have them on the foundations. Instead, I have placed these corner bracings. This was the original concept of the bracing, but I changed it because it seems to get in the way. If someone were to put interiors in this model, it would be very difficult. I also changed the shape of the studs and the slots of the foundation. Now there is a little bit of diagonal part to it. Before I start painting these pieces. I want to make sure that the parts fit correctly. I'm gonna assemble them in before painting. I will not put the foundation with the basement piece yet. I did this the first time and I was not able to take it out without breaking some parts. And I like how I broke that dormer last video. But this is just to ensure, you know, nothing goes wrong. And there's just problems with some parts of the basement print that expands. Now I'm fitting these parts so I can loosen up these foundation holes. If you guys want to 3D print and assemble this kit yourself, I have uploaded the STL files on my page at printables.com. Maybe if you want to follow along, you can maybe watch the video and assemble it yourself. For every painting that I do, I always apply some primer just so that the acrylic sticks on the PLA. Uh, the problem with PLA is that they're very difficult to paint if you don't treat them first. I, I once have experience where I uh, directly painted on the surface of a PLA and or whatever acrylic paint that I try to put on, it just doesn't stick, it just peels off. So it's very important to have a primer on a PLA print like this one. Uh, this will have to be dried for at least 24 Four hours before I can start painting. Once it is dry, I will then be painting these. The basement will be this light gray to simulate concrete. The window in the basement is going to be a fake one. I will just paint it black. 
And then the wood trims are gonna be painted espresso brown, which is darker than our previous brown. I'm going to be using this masking fluid so I don't accidentally paint this color. The door is going to be dark blue. The railings and the awning are going to be the same espresso brown. And of course, orange for the roof. I also gave the roof a little bit of weathering. To separate the windows from the wall, I painted it light gray. And yes, don't forget about the acrylic sheets for the windows. I'll be using cement glue on this one, and I'm not gonna forget this time. And now finally, I'm going to carefully assemble them and glue them together. And that was so much easier, and that looks absolutely cozy. And again, if you guys want to try this kit for yourself, it is free to download from printables.com. My page is in the link down below. For the next creation, it's gonna be this one, and ooh, this one has a balcony. Thank you guys so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss this one.